A car without wheels might make headlines. A rocket to Mars might stir the world. But sometimes, the quietest revolutions begin underwater. This is a motion story you can't see, and energy you never thought to look for. Not in the wind, not in the sun, but in the slow, steady pull of rivers, we forgot. A machine with no blades, no roar, just a silent spin beneath the surface. And at its heart, something as simple as a ball in a cup. If that sounds strange, it is. But it just might change everything. Let's dive in. Rivers we left behind. For centuries, we've turned to water for power. From wooden wheels beside ancient mills to massive concrete dams that now hold back entire valleys, hydropower has long been a symbol of steady, reliable energy. But most of that power comes from height, water falling from great elevations, smashing through turbines with force. That's what we call high-head hydropower. And it's effective where it's possible. But here's the problem. We're running out of those places. The best spots have already been taken. What's left are rivers that don't fall. They glide. Low head rivers. Shallow. Wide. Flowing day and night. But rarely used. And it's not because the energy isn't there. It's because our machines haven't been gentle enough to harness it. These low head rivers move quietly surrounded by ecosystems that don't respond well to disruption. Fish pass through them. Plants depend on them. Old turbines with sharp blades and fast rotations don't belong in waters like these. Every blade risks cutting through not just water, but life itself. So we've ignored them. Let them pass by. Let their energy dissolve into the ocean. But what if we could change that? What if there was a way to take power from a river without hurting what lives in it? What if we didn't need blades at all? In the search for answers, a strange little machine has begun turning heads. Or rather, turning water in a way that defies what we thought turbines had to be. The turbine with no blade. At first glance, it doesn't look like a turbine. There are no sharp edges, no spinning metal fans, no roar of churning blades. It's called the Setur Rolling Fluid Turbine, and it works by doing something most turbines don't, listening to the river instead of fighting it. The Setur Turbine sits in the water like a quiet guest. Instead of forcing the river to fall or redirect, it simply allows the flow to enter from above and swirl down through its chamber. There are no mechanical blades inside, nothing to slice, Nothing to jam, just a curved, hollow body. And inside it, a ball. That's it. But this simple structure hides something remarkable. As the water flows through the turbine, a vortex forms a spiraling column of motion, almost like a miniature whirlpool. It's this controlled vortex that drives the energy. Unlike traditional turbines, which need big drops or heavy infrastructure, the setter thrives in low-head environments, a shallow stream, a lazy river, a place where you'd never think electricity could be made. And yet, the vortex spins, quietly, consistently. The brilliance lies in what's missing. No external motors to kickstart it. No high-speed rotors to maintain. The energy comes from the natural instability of flowing water, gently guided, not forced. In this machine, it's not about overpowering nature. It's about dancing with it. Flow for flow. Curve for curve. And in that silence, a new kind of hydropower begins to whisper. A cup, a ball, and a vortex. To truly understand how this turbine works, you don't need a lab. Just a kitchen sink, a paper cup, and a ping-pong ball. Imagine this. You take a small plastic cup and pierce a hole in the bottom, just enough for water to flow out, slowly. Then, with a marker, you draw a cross pattern on the inside of the cup to give yourself a visual reference of movement. Now, hold the cup under a slow, steady stream of water. Give it a little spin. 
just enough to start the motion. Now, drop in the ping pong ball. What happens next is oddly mesmerizing. The water begins to spiral inside the cup, forming a miniature vortex. The ball, caught in this vortex, doesn't just float. It spins, suspended, alive with motion, driven only by the flow and the curve of the container. This is the core idea behind the setter turbine. No blades, no motors, just flow and spin. A vortex that appears as if summoned by nothing more than patience and shape. Block the hole at the bottom and the vortex collapses. The ball stops. Let it flow again and the spin returns. It's fragile. It's balanced. It's beautiful. Now imagine scaling that up. Imagine this happening beneath a river's surface. Not with plastic cups and ping pong balls, but with steel chambers and custom engineered spheres. That's where the magic becomes real. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Inside the vortex. Vortices are everywhere if you know where to look. You've seen one swirl in a bathtub drain. You've watched leaves spiral in a puddle. But inside the setter turbine, that natural dance is carefully shaped into something useful, something powerful. It all begins with a small twist. Flowing water on its own doesn't always spin, but give it a nudge, just the smallest push, and it begins to rotate. That's step one, the birth of the vortex. What follows is dictated by physics, by something called conservation of angular momentum. Think of a figure skater, arms out, spinning slowly, then arms in, spinning faster. As water is pulled inward toward the center of the turbine, it speeds up, it tightens, and this spiraling energy becomes stable, sustained by the very shape of the turbine. But it's not just spinning for the sake of movement. At the center of the vortex, pressure drops. This drop draws more water inward, fueling the spin. The turbine captures this motion and turns it into electricity, not through blades, but through the rotation of the internal sphere. Gravity plays its part, too, pulling water downward through the system, feeding the vortex. And unlike violent surges or hammering blades, this motion is smooth, constant, gentle. Inside this quiet spiral, there's no destruction, only motion. And from motion, energy. The secret ball. Hidden within the turbine is its most unusual feature, a smooth floating sphere. Not fixed, not powered, just resting inside the chamber, waiting for the water to move. At first, it seems too simple to matter, but this ball is the key. As water flows into the turbine, the sphere doesn't just sit still. It begins to roll along the inner wall, nudged gently by the current. This rolling creates subtle instabilities, small, uneven movements that kickstart the vortex. Without any blades or external spin, the ball helps the system turn itself on. And once the vortex forms, the ball doesn't stop. It spins not just around the chamber, but on its axis, like a miniature planet caught in a whirlpool. It's this rotation that drives the generator, the motion of a single sphere caught in a spiral. By changing the size or weight of the ball, or adjusting the shape of the chamber, the turbine can be tuned for different river conditions, shallow or deep, fast or slow. Each setting creates a different kind of dance, and for fish, there are no blades to dodge, no traps, just water, just flow. The secret isn't in cutting through nature, it's in learning how to move with it. Efficiency versus possibility. When people hear about a new turbine, one of the first questions is always the same. How efficient is it? The Setur turbine, at peak, reaches about 55% efficiency. That might sound underwhelming, especially when compared to conventional hydro turbines like the Francis or Kaplan types, which can exceed 90%.
Even other Vortex-based systems, like the ones developed by Turbulent, have reported efficiencies up to 75%. But numbers don't tell the full story. Those high-efficiency turbines require specific conditions. Deep drops, powerful flows, complex infrastructure. They can't be installed just anywhere. In many rivers, they're not just impractical, they're impossible. In those places, their efficiency is 0% because they are never built at all. This is where the setter turbine quietly shines. It works in low head environments. It doesn't need dams or diversions. It's small, modular, and can function where others can't. It opens the door to power in forgotten rivers and overlooked streams. That 55% becomes powerful when it's 55% of something that would otherwise be lost forever. It's not a competition of raw numbers. It's about presence, access, possibility. Because sometimes, the most meaningful energy isn't the one that performs best. It's the one that shows up where no one else can. The cost of power. Of course, efficiency alone doesn't pay the bills. What matters in the real world is cost, how much you spend to get the energy you need. Let's compare. A typical 5 kilowatt solar system might cost around $5,000 in hardware. The setter turbine, at the same size, comes in closer to $22,000. That's a big gap. But look deeper. Solar panels don't work at night. They slow down on cloudy days. On average, they produce only about 17% of their rated capacity over time. But rivers don't sleep. They flow at midnight. They flow through storms. The Sea Tour turbine can operate at over 50% capacity, day and night. When you calculate energy over a year, the hydro turbine generates about three times as much power. And because it's steady, you don't need expensive batteries to store what's made. In some remote or off-grid areas, the World Bank has found that small hydropower can even be cheaper than solar and wind. Not everywhere, but in the right place, it's not just affordable, it's unbeatable. So here we are, standing beside rivers we once overlooked, listening to water that never stopped moving. For years, we built machines that demanded force and height. But now, we're beginning to listen instead of command. One small turbine, one spinning ball, no blades, no violence, just quiet motion turned into light. The setter turbine isn't perfect, but it dares to work where others won't. It asks less, and in doing so, it gives more. Energy doesn't always need to roar. Sometimes it hums softly beneath the surface. And maybe, just maybe, that's where the future begins.